Okay, I'm going to try and sketch that lovely kitty. So when I start with a drawing, I always start with a circles and a skeleton. So I'm just going to put the head there. And then the spine is curled on this cat because they're sitting. Um, chest is there. Right here would probably be their elbow. Um, arm, a paw, their bum wraps around. We don't really see their uh, back paw there. They have another arm here with one paw hanging up in the air. Another leg and another paw. So that right there kind of gives us a rough of that cat, okay? So then I always start with the head. If, you, if I start with the body, I tend to make the body nice and big, and then the neck is really narrow, and this ha we have this itty little head. So I tend to start with the head, and then the body tends to be proportionate. Um, I usually start with the nose, because that's everything usually connects to the nose. So we're gonna put the nose there. Um, you're gonna end up erasing most of these circles, if not everything. I'm gonna zoom in on that picture there. So we have the head nice and big. Um, so we got a nose there. Let's see. And then there's the nostril line there. And then there's always a, a cheek, the bridge of the nose. And then from there, we can always make our eyes. This eye is closed though. We're just gonna leave that there for now. This one wraps around. You can see that right here. Oops, I touched it and it moved. I forgot, this is my new thing, the touch screen. And I can't get it to go bigger. Oop, oh well, I'll do it with my pencil. You can see it wraps around there because we're getting kind of a profile. Um, so it wraps around like that. And then the other eye is here. We'll just leave that like that for now. We'll fix the eyes later. See, and the other cheek is there. They'll connect. Um, and there's the bottom, its mouth is open. That's a, usually, you know, you put another circle there and that's its mouth, but this one has an open mouth. Um, because it has an open mouth, it curls like that. And this one is smaller, because again, it's like a profile. Like that. I just end up drawing over my lines a lot usually until I have what I want and then I go back and erase everything. The head only goes so far because there's going to be an ear here and an ear there, roughly. I use a lot of basic shapes to get where I want and the rest of the head goes there. Curl around like that. Open mouth, kind of there. All right. Let's see. If you can figure out your basic geometric shapes, um, usually circles and just ovals, you can draw just about anything. You just have to be able to see um, the circles and ovals in a body, kind of like in a person, go over here, um, obviously have the head. A lot of people like to do a stick figure like this, but we have hips and shoulders. So if you want to do a correct stick figure, I always tell my students, you do an I and an O. Because then you have 
shoulders and hips. And then from there you can draw your arm, your arm, a hand. Maybe he'll put his hand on his hip. And then and we'll have him doing like a squat or something. I had my smiley face over here earlier. And there's some feet. And there you have a person. And then from there you would just add a neck, trace around it to give it some muscle. Um, you wouldn't obviously, a lot of my kids like to go like this and trace like this and give really skinny bodies, but that's obviously not realistic. You would uh, give it a nice curve there like that. And around the leg. We usually have pretty muscular thighs. And to your feet, I'm not gonna bother with the feet. So if you can draw a correct stick figure with an I and an O, draw an O for the head, draw the letter I, then you can add on arms and legs and then trace for muscle. That's the easiest way. I teach that to my fifth and sixth graders and so long as they don't end up doing this, making really skinny uh, torsos, you can make a much better person than this. I always tell them that's no longer allowed because they know how to draw a correct figure. But uh, anyway, that was a detour. I got distracted. Um, I think this mouth is too big. I don't know, the tongue. I liked this pose, but then I remembered. I'm, I don't like doing, I think I made the tongue too wide. Now the tongue goes to here, but it starts here. That's the problem. If you look, you can't guess. The tongue starts here in the middle of this cheek. And the other side starts at the end of the cheek. So I had the tongue starting, you know, thinking a tongue goes both sides to our mouth. You know, without thinking I had the tongue over here. But the tongue is thinner. And then, but right here, where I had the tongue start, that is where the uh, side of the mouth goes to. So I'm actually gonna need to erase some because I have too many lines going on. Okay. So. Tongue has a bit of a curve to it. The bridge of the the other side of the mouth goes down to it. There's like a line in the middle of the tongue. There's a fang up here, which I can sharpen up with uh, another fang over here. I can sharpen that up with uh, my marker. And then there's the chin of the mouth. So that would be this line here. A lot of times you don't see lines in a drawing, you just see shadows. So you have to draw where you see the shadows. And there's a lot of lines in, in that that I'm gonna erase. Um, I'm gonna keep this line, that line there from our original circle. We'll get rid of. Now, okay. Another nice thing about cats is they're fur lines, their patterns. A lot of times they can be like puzzle pieces to help you um, draw their structure the right way. I love um, that about cats. Um, a lot of times when I'm doing the face, I'll start with the nose and the cheeks and then from there I'll go to where they're tabby lines or whatever are and I will use that to help make how big the head is so I don't make the head a bit too big too small um, and then it goes around the eye to about here nope it curves down actually and that also helps I don't know 
I think it helps the head not lose its shape. ear. Just throw some fuzz in there. Okay. And what stops the rest of this head over here is the other ear. A lot of times with a cat's ear it starts like the top of the headline here and it goes into the head a little. Um, it goes up about as high as the other ear, so I'm going to draw myself a guideline. Lots of guidelines, lots of circles, lots of skeletons. Do I want it to curve in that much? So I wasn't too far off with my original guideline thought. Throw in some hair. Okay. Now let's go back and fix those eyes. They're not straight lines. They're thicker. They're kind of triangly shaped. A lot of people would just do a straight line, but you can see this one's kind of like, there's the top of the triangle, there's the bottom, and this one's kind of, kind of like an eyeball shape, but much skinnier and darker because well, the eyes are closed. So there, we have the basic head shape started, and then it curves up because the cat is sitting, so that's why we drew our spine curved. But there is one, there's the fur line here, but there's also this line here from, I don't know, maybe a collar or just the way the direction of the fur changes. So it gives us a line there, which is why we have this line here. Kind of what this line right here was supposed to start being. Um, Now we're gonna, let's see, the ta this tabby fur curls back here, curves down like this. Okay, I'll stop there for the tabby fur until we get more of the spine done. It's actually kind of a flat. They don't, back, uh, cat backs don't curve right away. There's always like a flat line usually before there's a sharp curve down. So, and let's measure, let's see. From the tip, it goes a little bit past, so from the tip, a little bit past. All right, we're good. We guesstimated correctly. Let me move my, oh no, the picture disappeared off the screen. All right, there we go. Nice roundness there. I make a lot of lines with the knowledge that, yes, I will erase later. I am a huge, um, some teachers will say make straight lines, but I like to make a lot of little lines. Um, some are teachers that drives them crazy, but I'll make a million lines before I settle on one. And if they get too many, I just erase. Okay. Now, go on to the other side of the cat. Let's see, we have the little bit of fur we put here with the head and then there's that shadow line kind of there and then right almost to the mouth we connect to back to the body so we put that line here almost to the mouth we're gonna make the chest let's see it's gonna go straight and then curve in and that's what we made this uh, shoulder circle for. And then it turns into this leg we guesstimated the location of. A lot of times I end up guessing incorrectly for the legs, but it helps me. Well, I got the general place, but I don't ever make them long enough or whatever. 
um, but it helps get the shape of the body so that you can add on a head. Just make sure you don't ever make your body too big. You don't go too far down because then you'll have this really amazing body that you drew and then you'll look up and you'll have this itty bitty head. That's a problem I have sometimes. And then it's like, ah, oh, snap, I gotta go back. Let's see, we're just gonna put a paw there for now. We'll come back to it. And then I'm actually going to erase this skeleton here leg we have, arms and leg, because now that we have this leg done, from there, everything connects. So once you get one leg in, usually you can get the other legs. So right at where it starts to curve is where this other leg attaches. So we're just gonna throw that in real quick. So right at when it begins to curve, we're gonna, and it's not as long as this other one. So we're gonna, and then there's a little paw here. And we'll come back to the paw. It's a little bit of, it's always something back there. I mean, even if we can't really see it because it's shadow, obviously that's their belly. And then the hind legs where, are right up here where the um, hidden, the behind leg meets the chest. Everything kind of meets there. So that'd be right there. It's not much, and it goes to about this point, to about there, right before we have we start our actual paw. So I'm just gonna kind of make that fit, and then there's a little bit of a paw there, and I will give it more paw detail later. I'm not interested in paws right now. Right now I'm interested in body shaping because once you can get the shape of the body um then you can then you can add paws paws are just like extra little things same when i draw people i do hands and feet last um i focus more on the overall big shape because if you spend so much time on your hands and then they're too big or too small then you wasted all that time let's erase some of this so we can get the fur line in of the tabby. Okay. See, and I end up making his bum, her bum, much too big. Oh well. Erase my straight lines over here. Okay. So, now we've got to do this line here. So, we have our elbow line here, and I only went that far because that's this, and then it curves up. So it curves up a little bit, and it makes a round, goes around. And you're probably never going to be 100%, I think I made this one too big, um, exact with the fur line. Um, but you can always get close. So there we go. This will be the tabby part. Um, and then the arm, this arm has a little bit, my, my Mindy has something like that, like little shin guards. And then on the thigh, there's a kind of a triangle and then a down. So, triangle, and then down. And then I think we have all the tabby bits. And so now we just need to fix the paw. Okay, so it kind of goes in and then the toes. And we have, let's see, one big toe, and then another big toe. We only have two toes we can see here. On this one, the pot is obstructing our view. So, let me scroll the picture down a little bit. Um, I'm just gonna draw. Oh, you 
can't see what I'm doing. Sorry. I'll go back and do the pot later. There. It's a basic pot. Okay. And it goes around to mid thigh. Something like that. Okay, so now we have the basic pot. Um, well, it gives me that angle. Okay, so this one it goes like that a little bit, and then we have our big toe here. And right before that patch, we had a bit of a dew claw. There we go. A little toe. Okay, so there we go. Now we just have to go back. But basically, if you want to draw any cat, like say you want to do a standing cat or a sitting cat, you just start with head, their spine, there's their leg, other leg. We obviously don't have to draw it too big because their chest circle their bum circle, and then their other toe, tail, if you can see it. If you want to do a standing cat, there's the head, neck, spine, tail, chest circle, bum circle, leg, leg, and then you obviously have legs that you can only see part of. And then from there, kind of like when you did the a person, you trace around. So you start filling it in. You just trace around that skeleton you made to make the shape of the body that you want. And then don't ever worry about paws when you're fleshing out the body, because you can always go back and fix the paws. For now, just make ugly paws, okay? And then, obviously a tail you can just, however you want, it kind of looks like a kitten with how small its tail is. And then, with the head, you'll also have a box for a muzzle. Obviously, how big a muzzle you make, you can end up making a dog. You can end up making a cat. That's a really long neck, actually. I'll just put a nice collar on it. That'll, that's always a nice cheat. And then ears. An easy way to do an eye is to do a sideways triangle. That always blows my kids' minds. And then you can always make that poofy cheek. There you go. That's the simple way. Just start with a skeleton, like with this one. Um, you already pretty much have the body with those circles. Worry about pause later. Trace around your circles and your skeleton. And we will have this cat facing forward. Just do a basic ears. We can always, oops, sorry, go back to them. Bridge of the nose, and you can add the eyes. But like I said, if your cat has any sort of tabby bits or black bits or calico spots, those can be really handy. Those those puzzle pieces can be handy to draw the to fill out and shape the body correctly. So that's how I draw cats and people. <laughs>